saw you hanging out with Noah the other day. Lee, it's not what he looks like. I won't hesitate, bitch. It was an accident. How the f do you suck dick on accident? I don't know. I, I, Ugh, I can't believe you've done this. I'm Josh Elliott. I'm Lauren Timbrook. And today we are reviewing <laughs> The Kissing Booth. Kissing Booth. It's about this girl. Her name is Elle. She's best friends with this guy named Delee, and they've been best friends forever. And they have all these friends rules or whatever, kind of like, don't tell secrets. Don't lie to <laughs> each other. But there's this one big rule that says Don't Lee, date each other's siblings. Yeah. So Lee has an older brother named Noah, and he's like super buff, super like, oh. Obviously, you want him. Her journey about getting with this guy and not hurting Lee. It's so stupid. It's really stupid. <laughs> it's like every single high school cliche movie I've ever watched. But I will say, even though it sucks, it makes you want to watch it. Mm -hmm. I like sit there and think, oh no, she didn't. But it's like, you know she was going to do that. She is a terrible person, I yeah. honestly think. No, I agree. It's not like she's terrible, but she has to learn a lesson. It's like, no, they want you to root for her, even though she's manipulating everyone around yeah. her to get what she wants. Because she told her best friend, Lee, she's like, oh no, like, I don't like him. I don't want to do that to you. I love you. And then she turns to his brother and is like, I want you, but don't tell your brother that you've like grown up with your whole life and don't let anybody know. But I want you so bad. I'm so happy to be with you. And why does she want Noah? He's exactly. not an interesting no, person. No, I play sports and <laughs> I ride a motorcycle. He's hot. Like, and they have like the weirdest relationship as well. They don't actually get together until the 45 minute mark when they kiss at the kissing booth and it's like a magical you're moment. Like, yes. But before that, Noah and she don't get along. I they know. argue all the time. They argue all the time. But he's he also like weirdly overprotective of her. She finds out early on in the movie that the reason no guys are ever interested in her is because anytime a guy shows interest in her, Noah tells them not to and she confronts him about it and he's like, I just want to look out for you. Like, why would you get with that? Like, if you have missed every single opportunity and you're like insecure because no one wants to date you, why would you get with the one person who's going around telling everybody like all these things about you? So I think the message of the movie is if there's a guy in your life that is violently overprotective of you, then he is great boyfriend yes. material and you should date him. And we also have the perfect guy, right? in front of you the whole time. You should just <laughs> not date them. You should just kick them to the curb, betray them, and then wait for them to move on and then be bitter <laughs> about it. Although I will say one of the few good things about this movie is that it does have a guy and a girl as best friends yeah. and there is no romantic yeah. interest between Which them the good. entire movie. They have good chemistry. Like I liked the actors kind of. Yeah. Like I believed they were friends. But my thing was, they're in high school, yet they still follow to a T all of these rules that they created when they were nine. Yeah. And that's the lesson they have to learn. At the very end of the movie, when all this stuff happens, they say, Oh, maybe we shouldn't have done that. You're yeah. realizing that now? We're going to spoilers for The Kissing Booth. Go to the time code at the bottom of the screen if you want to avoid spoilers for The Kissing Booth. <laughs> So Lee finds out. Elle was like over at Lee's house with Noah and they were like, you know, making out, hanging out, whatever. And she didn't think that Lee was going to be home. Also, okay. there are chickens in the bathroom over there if that's what you're hearing. We live on a farm, if you haven't guessed from all the other videos of us outside on the farm. We all live here. Yeah. I sleep upstairs. He looks at them and is like, what? I can't believe you. Oh my gosh, like, this is the biggest betrayal ever. Lee's like, you just wanted her for sex. And then he was like, tell me you guys didn't have sex already. And then they both were like, Ready? Oh, and the first time they have sex is right underneath the Hollywood sign, just like every teenager's first experience. So then there's like this big confrontation where Noah gets violent again. Cause Lee was like squaring up, but then that does not <laughs> give Noah the right to like None of you the know. characters had a right to do anything. Yeah, they did. like they shouldn't have done anything. They all just should have sat there by their own business. And so they don't talk for like six months, and then Elle finally gets her license, and then they're at the prom all of a sudden, and they have this like memorabilia thing, and they had one for like. Noah walks out and like a text and everything. Also wait, she's probably a sophomore and he's probably a senior. There's also a period of time where you and Brett are three years apart. So uh, I it was legal, okay. Also, I was never a sophomore. Like I feel like that's different. Like junior, senior, that's fine. But like sophomore, senior? 
That's like he's gonna play you. So we're having the shared costume birthday party. Yeah. And Lee forgives her and everything. Yeah, and he's like, I'm sorry, like that I was so mad at you. I just wish you would have told me. That's the closest thing this movie has to a redeeming moment because yeah. it actually finally realizes how stupid it yeah, is. Yeah, like they both were just kind of like, this is dumb, which is really nice. I'm ready for final verdicts. Are you? Yeah, me too. I'm okay. Gonna do it. There are lots of high school movies that don't feel realistic, but this movie even takes that to a whole new extreme. It feels like it was written by a middle schooler that's watched a bunch of high school movies but never actually been to high school. It's very rare that you find a movie that deals with high school issues as immaturely as The Kissing Booth does, yeah. so I'm gonna give it a two. I agree with everything that Josh just said. But there is some entertainment value, both in like a not supposed to be way and like it's actually kind of funny sometimes. Just for that, and because my little fourth grade self that would sit down and write stories about, you know, being in high school, like, I'll, I'll give it a three. So the final verdict for The Kissing Booth is a 2.5. Yay! Yay! So what did you think of The Kissing Booth? If you saw it, comment below to let us know. Leave a like, subscribe. Peace, Peace out! out. Hey guys, thanks for watching our video. Click here to subscribe and click here to watch our last video. Also, follow our Instagram, the link is in the description. <laughs> Some cheese from the kissing booth.